A few days ago, iOS 13, the final version, was released. And with it, it comes a great new feature that is dark mode. And so in this video, I want to show you how I said that you would implement dark mode functionality inside of a Xamarin Forms application. So I'm here in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac, and I'm going to be creating a brand new Xamarin Forms project. So here on multi-platform, blank forms app is going to be more than enough. This is going to be a very simple example. I just want to show you how dark mode can be used within your Xamarin Forms project. I'm going to be selecting both Android and iOS, but I'm going to be mainly focusing on the iOS project. We're actually not really going to touch the Android project. All right, so we have this brand new project. And what I want to do is here on the main page, add a few controls inside of this stack layout. So eventually we see how they react to dark mode. Of course, by default, we see this label, but let me also go ahead and add an entry. And let me go ahead and add a button down below with some text. And also I will remove these horizontal vertical options. So I will have something like this. Excellent. Now, if I were to run this application as it is inside of an iOS simulator, let's select this iPhone 11. And by the way, to be able to code this, you're going to need a couple of things. The first one is, of course, Xcode 11 already installed on your computer. And the second one is at the moment of recording this video, at least, you will have to come here to Visual Studio, uh, to the Visual Studio menu, select check for updates and switch to the Xcode 11 Previews update channel. Now, Xcode 11 is no longer in preview. It, it was released just a few days ago, so I would expect that all of the things that you would download from this channel would soon be available in the stable channel as well. But just notice, if you can already install Xamarin.iOS 13 or higher from the stable channel, and if you can't, you may still see this Xcode 11 previews channel and you will have to switch to that one. Let's navigate back to the simulator. Of course, by default, dark mode is not enabled. But if we navigate here on the simulator over to settings and down to developer, you will be able to enable a dark appearance. And if we navigate back to our application, Notice that by default, the native controls or, or some of the native controls are already going to react to this dark mode. So in fact, if to that entry, which is the one that we see change for dark mode, we set a placeholder and run this one more time, still with dark mode enabled, we did see that the control itself, the native control, already behaves correctly in dark mode. And if we start typing in it, well, it still behaves correctly for dark mode. But the rest of the elements just don't yet. So that is what this video is about. And essentially, we're going to have to create the light theme and the dark theme. So we're going to be using resources in here. If you're familiar with SAML resources, we're going to be using them. So I will be creating inside of the .NET standard library a new folder and I'm going to call styles. And instead of the styles folder, I am going to be adding a new file. Now I am going to be selecting from forms, the forms content page SAML, but I don't really want a new content page. I will show you how we're going to configure these SAML and c files in just a minute, but I'm using this template because of the files that it creates. But this one is going to be first, let's create the live theme. And what I will have to do is immediately change this to be a resource dictionary. This is not going to be a content page. This is going to be a resource dictionary. And of course, I have to change that on both the SAML and the c -sharp files. And of course, resource dictionary doesn't have a content property, so I have to delete that. And so now we have this live theme resource dictionary. The same thing will have to happen for the dark theme. So I will add yet another file using the forms content page SAML template, and this is going to be dark theme, like this. And the same thing will happen. We have to 
make this a resource dictionary on both the C sharp and the SAML files. Now the C sharp files are actually not going to be modified more than making the class inherit from resource dictionary instead of from content page. But we are going to be working with this couple of SAML files. So these, now that they are resource dictionaries, are the ones that are going to be used by the application as any resource dictionary would be used. So for example, if I define inside of this live theme resource dictionary a new color, I can make this color black, so six zeros in here. And this is going to have a key of background. And if this is going to be background in the live theme, let me make this white instead. So the background on the live theme is going to be white. And for each and every one of these resources that I add to the light theme, I will also have to add to the dark theme. Of course, in this case, the background will be black. So six zeros. Okay. So we have these couple of resource dictionaries, but so far they are not being used because if I were to come here to the main page and set the background in here, let's set background color and try to set some static research for now. Well, background, the one that I have just defined over here is not accessible. The way to make it accessible is to define the resource dictionary over on the app.saml file inside of the application resources. So in here, what I will have to do is define a resource dictionary. And this resource dictionary is actually going to be used throughout the entire application. So any content page is going to use the resource dictionary that comes from the application resources. And because I already have this couple of resource dictionaries over here on these other SAML files, what I can do is just reference it. Now I can only reference one at a time. So I will start by referencing the light theme because that is going to be the default one. So from styles, which is my folder, I will be using the liked theme.saml file. So by default, this light theme.saml file is going to provide the application with the resources that it is going to use. And now with this in place, I can from the main page, come over here to the content page, set the background color and use the static resource of a background. And just to show you that this is actually working, let me change this to, I don't know, ref. Save this and back on the main page. As soon as I build this project, we should see the background color of the content page change to red. And there it is. But of course, it is currently using the one on the light theme and wouldn't automatically change to the dark theme. We are not making that change anywhere. And let me just get this back to white. The way to make that change is through a renderer. So I will have to navigate over to the iOS project and create a new renderer. So I will add, I will start by adding a new folder that is going to be renderers. And instead of the renderers folder, I will add a new file that is going to be a normal empty class, C sharp class that is going to be called, let's call this page renderer. Now this page renderer, if you're not familiar with renderers on summary forms, is simply going to be used to render any content page that we have for iOS. Of course, we could have our own custom renderer for Android, but we're focusing on iOS right now. So how do we make this renderer be used to render any content page? Well, we make this class inherit from page renderer. And there it is. Now page renderer is a page renderer. Once it is a renderer, we can export this page renderer so that it is used in content pages. And to do that, right above the namespace, I will have to set assembly in here, colon, and export renderer. Summary forms really makes it very easy to export this renderer. 
through the export renderer class, I will just have to add a using directive to summary forms. And the export renderer class is going to require first the type of summary forms class that is going to be using the page render. In our case, that is going to be content page. So any content page is now going to be using this renderer. How do we set this render? Well, after the first type, which is a type that is going to be using the render, I pass the renderer that is going to be used. And in this case, that is page renderer, which is inside of dark mode.ios.renderers. That is the namespace right here. Dot page renderer, just like this. With that single line of code, now Summary Forms knows that for any content page that has to be rendered, it is first going to be doing whatever page renderer in here is doing. And so it is exactly in here where we can set what theme is going to be used, light theme or dark theme, depending on the iOS theme that is currently enabled. And actually react to any changes in the theme. So to enable this, I will have to start by overriding the onElementChanged method. This is going to be called every single time the content page is going to change. So let's say that it has been created or something similar. We want to check if we should set the app theme. So just to make sure that something has actually changed, I am going to first evaluate if the old element is different than null or element is null. In any of these scenarios, I just want to return. I don't want to do anything. But if none of these scenarios is true, I am going to be setting the theme. So I am going to be creating down below a new method that is going to be called set theme and that I will be calling directly from here. So we'll have this private void set theme method. I will implement it in just a minute. And just to make sure that my app doesn't crash, I am going to call this method inside a try catch block and catch any exception that may happen. So the setup team is already going to be called every single time that the content page changes but there is another time when the set theme method should also be called. And that is when the theme actually changes. So this is just going to be used perhaps when the application first starts or when the page first gets rendered. It is going to then, here inside of the set theme, evaluate what theme it should use. But another time when it should evaluate what theme to use is if the user suddenly changed the theme. Or, you know, whether dark mode was enabled or disabled inside of the iOS system. So we'll also have to react to another method that we can override that is called trade collection did change. This one is going to be executed when dark mode is enabled or disabled. So how can we know if the theme changed? Well, we can, we can evaluate if trade collection dot user interface style is different than the previous trade collection dot user interface style. So this means that the style changed, which means that we should evaluate what theme to use again. So we should call set theme one more time. And from here, things are going to be very simple. We're simply going to evaluate what user interface style to use. And that is also going to be done through trade collection. This is going to be very helpful. We're going to be evaluating its user interface style. We want to evaluate if that style is equal to UI user interface style dot dark, which is dark mode. And if it is, we want the current resources for application. So that is referring to the resources over here on app.saml, these resources, app.resources. We want to set this to be dark mode. So I will initialize a new dark mode. And sorry, in this case, this dark theme. That is the name of my class. As you remember, that is the name of this class over here. 
a registers dictionary, but that is a class, so I can initialize it like this. And of course, I need a using directive to dark mode dot styles, which is the namespace for my dark theme class in here. And of course, in case this is not dark mode, well, we are going to be using the light theme. So app.current dot resources would be equal to new light theme, just like this. So essentially, we're going to be changing right here what resources, what resource dictionary is going to be used inside of the application, whether the dark theme or the light theme resource dictionary. And this is going to be evaluated when the content page is created or when dark mode is enabled or disabled. Excellent. So now the resource says that we have here on app.saml should be updated accordingly. By default, the light theme is going to be used, but if required, dark theme is going to take its place. And so over here on the main page, this background reference will start to change. Sure, by default, it is going to be using the one over here on this resource dictionary, but if necessary, the resource dictionary that is going to be used is actually this one. Which brings me to the last change that we have to make in here. Because this resource can actually change, it is not going to be static. It is going to be a dynamic resource. Sometimes it may come from light theme, sometimes it may come from dark theme. So we have to set this as dynamic. And that's it. That is everything that we need to do to react to dark mode. If we now run our application, and remember that currently here dark mode is enabled on my simulator, I now see the background be used. It is the background that is coming from dark theme. And of course, if I were to navigate back to the settings here in the simulator, to developer and disable dark appearance, well, my application reacted automatically without having to restart the application at all. So excellent. As you can see, it is quite simple. And now that we have everything set up, we can start adding more, more resources. For example, you may have noticed how this label wasn't displayed correctly when dark mode was enabled. And that is because the label still was black. So what we can do is add yet another color resource in here that is going to be, let's say, main label that in light mode is still going to be black. But on dark mode or on the dark theme, this is going to be white. Like this. Now, if we run this, when dark mode is not enabled, we still see that label be black. But if we enable dark appearance in here, and navigate back over here. <laughs> of course, I'm missing something terribly important. I am not using that resource back here. So of course the label is going to have a color, text color pointing to a dynamic resource. Important to set this as dynamic, not static. And this is going to be main label. So just paste that value in here. <laughs> Let me try this again. And there it is. Dark mode is enabled and we see the label using the white color that is used for dark theme. And of course, if I were to switch back to, well, dark appearance be disabled, I see that value change as well, automatically. And this can be used throughout any resource that you need. Now, let me show you an example that I have over here, because there is an additional thing that I want to show you. Now, this is actually doing the exact same thing. As you can see, I have the page renderer and I have on the app.saml the resource dictionary and I have dark theme and I have light theme. And in this new book page, I have a background color pointing to a dynamic resource. There is another dynamic resource down below. So this is exactly what we have done before. However, this application in particular has a list view. And something that I wanted to mention in here is that the list views background color should be set to transparent. 
So let me show you what would happen if I didn't set this to transparent. I am going to be removing this and I am going to be running again on the simulator. Now notice that the background color is already changing dynamically based on the theme that is being used and the text cell also has a couple of values that are changing. So if I see this on the light theme, it appears to work perfectly. But if I switch this over to dark appearance and navigate back to the application, notice that the cells still use the default background. And because the text main color did change dynamically, well, it is now white, but it cannot be displayed correctly. The alternative that I first thought of is just to make the background for the list view to be also dynamic. So use dynamic resource to be exactly the same as the background color for the entire content page. That would work, wouldn't it? Well, it turns out that once the list view or its cells are rendered, the cells themselves don't change. Notice that by default, the first time they are rendered, they correctly use the values. But when dark mode gets disabled or enabled, when it changes, they are not re-rendered. They do not react to the change. They stay with the resources that were used when they were created, even though this is dynamic. So the solution that I came up with is just to make this transparent. So this way it will just display the background color for the entire content page. So this time with the list view being transparent, it now works. It doesn't have to react to the changes because the changes are already happening in the background color of the content page itself. So we see here that each cell seems to be white, but it's just transparent. So we see the background of the content page itself. So if I enable dark appearance, well, this time it works perfectly because the background of the list view is still transparent. So I see the background of the content page. So there you have it. This is how you can enable dark mode inside of your applications. The code for the example that we worked on in this video, by the way, is going to be referenced all over the place here, wherever you're watching this video, there is going to be a GitHub repository. So you can explore it, you can download it, fork it, whatever you want. Hopefully this video was useful to you. If it was, don't forget to like it, share it, do all the normal stuff. Let me know if there is a particular question that you have. See you in the next one.